Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and um, today I'm going to focus on you. Yeah, you. You're nervous already, aren't you? Hey, so I am Steve Gerrard. I am a photographer in Montreal. I photograph people, weddings, portraits, people on stage, bands, stuff like that. All my pictures tend to have people in them, more or less. So how does it feel when a photographer has their photo taken? That's what I wanna talk about today because I think having your picture taken by another photographer when you are a photographer is so important and really, really valuable as a photographer. So let's talk about that. One of the things that people say to me all the time is I hate having my photographs taken or I'm really uncomfortable in front of the camera. You're gonna have a hard time getting good pictures of us, all that kind of stuff. And I think that sometimes the worst of those are other photographers. We kind of hide behind the camera rather than being in front of it. And I just wanna talk about my experience of being the other side of the lens, which I've done a few times now, and why I've actually become a better photographer, I think, because I've been on the other side of the camera a few times. Now, as you can see, I'm not exactly photogenic. I am bald, I'm sure I am getting old. I have plenty of things I don't like about myself. So you would think that maybe being in front of the camera, I would be like hypersensitive and hyper uncomfortable. And I'm not exactly completely comfortable in front of the camera, but I have learned over the years that just kind of relaxing and not taking it too seriously when you're having your picture taken tends to end up giving you better pictures. And as photographers, I don't think that we can truly relate to the experience that our clients are going through unless we have been in that position and felt the kind of things that they are feeling while the camera is pointing at them. If you're a photographer that takes pictures of couples a lot like I do, whether it's at weddings, engagements or other stuff like that, then how do you think you would feel if you and your significant other had pictures and were that side of the camera and being kind of close and intimate while somebody was pointing the camera at you and clicking away? It's a weird thing and it's kind of uncomfortable for a lot of people. Being photographed is a bit of a weird thing anyway, but being photographed with your significant other, being all intimate and romantic or whatever it is, is makes you feel a little bit vulnerable, I think. And as photographers, if we can get into that headspace and feel vulnerable ourselves in front of the camera, then we are gonna feel sympathetic towards our clients when they are in that position. And I think that we learn how to make them feel comfortable because we know what made us feel comfortable in that situation and dealing with photographers who are good at making you feel comfortable or just picking up tricks from other photographers to help you work with your clients is just invaluable practice. And of course you also end up with some great pictures if you choose the right photographer. I've been lucky to have photo shoots with some of my favorite photographers in the world and I'll talk to you a little bit about that soon. Some of those were just on my own. Some were with Evelyn, my wife. Some were with the whole family, with the kids and all of that. And each one has been great fun. Each one we've got great photos from, but also each one has been a learning experience for me as a photographer. If you photograph people, you've probably heard people just saying, what do I do with my hands and things like that. And it seems like a weird thing to me that people are asking what they do with their hands. I'm like, what would you normally do with your hands if I wasn't taking pictures of you? But when you're actually having your picture taken, you suddenly realize like, actually, where do I put my hands for this picture? And how do I act? And what's my best angle? And you may not feel like you wanna be directed or posed, I don't even like the word posed, but it actually helps you feel at ease if the photographer gives you a few prompts and kind of suggests things. The first thing that I say to people when I'm photographing them is, if I'm just clicking away and not saying very much, that means whatever you're doing is just great and carry on doing that. If I think something's gonna make the picture better, I'm gonna tell you or suggest that you do something slightly different. But as a photographer, I usually let people kind of do their own thing and then work with that. And that tends to lead to more authentic portraits, I think. And how do you pick a photographer if you're a photographer and you wanna be on the other side of the camera and get that experience of being photographed? Then that decision-making process is the same thing that your clients are going through or your potential clients are going through. 
they're looking at your style, they're looking to get some sense of your personality, they're looking for somebody who they think they're going to be compatible with, and also they're going to be paying attention to their budget, most people. And then after all of that, it just kind of comes down to a little bit of instinct and trying to feel a connection with the photographer. So if you're looking for somebody, that's what you're looking for. You might have your favorite photographers that you already like and have in mind for a shoot. And those photographers might be miles away from you. They might even be in different countries or they might be local. And some of the photographers that I've had shoots with have been from completely different continents and some of the photographers could hardly be nearer to where we live. One of the first shoots that we had as a family, all five of us, was with my friend Ed Pierce, who is an amazing photographer. You may know him or you may not, but definitely go and check out his work. We were on holiday, vacation at that time, and we invited Ed down to come and take some pictures while we were there. And one of the things I remember about that shoot is that he arrived and after some brief just like chit chat, he instantly just started taking kind of candid pictures. And we, we didn't think we were ready for the shoot. We were just in this caravan. We were getting ready for the shoot, but he already started taking pictures there and then. And th some of those pictures are some of my favorites from the entire shoot. And what that taught me was always be ready and always be looking for potential photo opportunities and start telling a story. Don't just make it about posed portraits. Get those in between moments as well. And those could actually be more authentic and more meaningful for you as a family or as a couple than the pictures that you anticipated you were going to be taking in the first place. If Evelyn and I were going to get married all over again, the person we would get to shoot the wedding is probably Fur Easty from Mexico. I consider Fur a friend of mine now, and he came to our house in England when we lived there and did a shoot with the family. And it was completely unscripted. Nothing was set up. He just ran around after the kids and followed us wherever we went in the park or at our home and just snapped away and wanted to document how we are as a family rather than just how we looked in front of a nice background in nice light. So even when my son, who was really young at the time, he he was running and he tripped and he fell down and he was crying on the floor and Fur was taking pictures of that, which I don't think many photographers would do that, but he just carried on and he got those moments and even though in the moment you're more concerned about the fact that your kid is on the floor crying, in the long term, those pictures take on more meaning and become more of a memory of how it was growing up with young kids. And we really, really treasure those moments as well as the other ones that he took along the way. One of the photographers that inspired me very early on a lot was Jeff Newsom from California. And when he was in the UK, he came and took some pictures just of me and Evelyn. And what I remember from that was that his style, the part of what captured the, my imagination with him was he did these crazy like light painting and really kind of almost scientific portraits. But the pictures that we prefer from that shoot were none of that. They were just us being together in a cool location and Jeff kind of documented us together and didn't try any of the clever stuff that he, he was known for at that point. So that made me realize that we don't always have to be taking hero shots. The little moments in between and the simpler shots can sometimes be just as great and just as important. If you look back through my channel and look at the thumbnails for some of my videos, one of the shoots that comes up again and again with me is from a shoot that I did in California with Jose Villa, who is a bit of a superstar photographer. A lot of you will know Jose Villa and totally different kind of photographer to me, but I've always loved his work. He shoots on film and Jose is all about the light. Like he can shoot in the same location on different days, different days, different days. And it's just, he's just looking for the light. And that is number one, the most important thing with him. He will judge when the light is gonna have that kind of hazy, golden hour glow. So those pictures of me, they just look like Jose Villa pictures and they look like the kind of pictures that I loved from him. And that was the reason I booked him to do the pictures. It's his signature style and his signature style is all about light. Evelyn and I hosted a workshop in the UK for Sean Flanagan from Washington State. So when he was over, we did a shoot, I think it was the day before his workshop and we kind of gave him a bit of a tour of England and his style is just just super, super cool. And he managed to make two not so cool people 
look pretty cool in his pictures because that is just the way that he works and he's great at working out what makes people look good in pictures and his signature style is almost a bit hipster some people might think but I love it and the pictures that he took one of them is still my desktop on my computer and we have another one framed upstairs so so we love Sean Flanagan. Another photographer was Jonathan Canless. He runs the Film Is Not Dead workshop. So he is shooting on film again, obviously. And we did a shoot with him in London. And what I remember about Jonathan's style was he really avoided anything that he thought was cliche or just a bit too obvious. And he was always looking for something a little bit quirky and a little bit different and different from what you'd seen from him before. So. Although with Jose and Sean to an extent, we were looking for a style that we'd seen him do before. With Jonathan, felt like he was always pushing himself to do something completely different, but still in a way that kept his signature style and his signature look. And again, we have some of those pictures in frames. Frame your pictures, folks. And uh, yeah, Jonathan's great. Before we moved to Canada, we wanted to do a shoot in the UK and... I thought it'd be a great idea to do a shoot in the city that I grew up in, which is Chester, which just happened to be the city that Liam Crawley was based in from the Crawleys. And he is just one of the best family photographers out there. So we set up a shoot with Liam in Chester and that was kind of like a parting shoot, like a last shoot in England before we moved to Canada kind of shoot. And Liam just made me really, really appreciate the artistry in family photography. He was so inventive and creative with the shoot, coming up with ideas and playing with the kids and getting them to have fun on the shoot and not just stand there statically, but just run around us and keep doing all kinds of weird things and jumping in the air and all that good stuff. And it just became a really, really fun shoot. The kids loved it. The pictures show them having a good time and the pictures show us as a family just having a brilliant time in my hometown. Once we were in Montreal, we invited Drew and Angela from the Willinghams and they drove all the way up to Montreal, spent a couple of days with us and we did a photo shoot with them around Montreal. And those pictures again are in frames and one is the screensaver on my phone. And again, similar to the Crawleys, we just went out and had a great time. Nothing was particularly set up. There was a couple of pictures where he was like, okay, do this, stand there. But a lot of the pictures that I loved from that shoot were kind of the in-between moments. The pictures where we weren't really standing anywhere particularly ready for a photo, but Drew just kept shooting away and finding interesting angles. And some of those just, they just have this authenticity again to them and really creative kind of, shooting from Drew, which I loved. And I think now whenever I'm on a family shoot, there's always a little bit of fur in the back of my mind. There's always a bit of Liam in the back of my mind and there's always a bit of Drew. And some of those influences just filter into what I do and what I don't do, which is kind of just as important. I really want to capture authenticity in my pictures of families, especially. And I want to capture the dynamic between parents and kids and different generations and just capture a time in their life where they can look back on those pictures and feel like they had a really good connection together and it captured a moment. And then the last shoot that I had was just me on my own. I kind of needed some new profile pictures. The pictures that I'd been using for my YouTube thumbnails and that kind of stuff were getting pretty old and you know, we all change. So I wanted somebody to get some newer pictures of me and the way that I found this photographer was completely random. Here at home, we have a little dog called Roxy. She's our family dog and she's a bit mental. She goes crazy whenever a dog walks past outside the house. and We always have to calm her down. But then one day there was this one girl who was walking with her little white dog. And for some reason, Roxy was just completely chill. No barking, completely calm. And so I just got chatting to this girl while she was walking her dog. And we chatted a few more times because she was walking her dog and our dogs became kind of friends. And one day I just happened to mention I was a photographer and she said, me too. So I checked out her work and instantly loved what she was doing and was kind of amazed that she lives pretty much four or five houses away from where we are. So when I wanted new profile pictures, she was right there. I loved her work. We got on already. So she did my last shoot and I'm going to share a few pictures from that. Her name is Isabella Cara, and I'm going to link all these photographers down below so you can go and check out their work. But 
her whole process was really interesting to me. She's a much younger photographer and she's kind of starting out in a career, although she's already great. And it was interesting to see her process of how she would send me the proofs rather than sending me the finished pictures straight away. She would send me some proofs to go through, pick my favorites, and those were the ones that she would edit. So it meant that she only really finished editing the ones that I was definitely, definitely going to use. And I found that really interesting and I've actually adopted that a little bit. I was already kind of doing it a little bit, but I realized that that's a really good process and how that works for the client really well because they can just kind of pick the ones that they're definitely going to use. So that's actually quite a few shoots that I've been on, whether it's with my family, just with Evelyn or on my own. And like I say, each one has taught me something and all of those things hopefully have made me a better photographer and have helped how I do business with clients but also how I interact with clients, how I can make them feel comfortable. Some photographers just have a way of naturally getting people to feel at ease in front of the camera, and that's a definite skill. And if you can pick up any little tidbits from different photographers on how to do that with your clients, then that is invaluable. So if you have time, check out the links below to those photographers, go and see their work. If you don't already know it, they're all amazing photographers, and each one is very different from the other. And if you found this video useful, please hit the like, subscribe if you want to see more, and we will see you on the next one. Now go and get your picture taken.